This video will be part one of a two-part video series on a production of micro or miniature wood segmented disc. In this part one of this video series, I will be describing the slicing of the wood miniature segments or wedges on the bandsaw, sanding and assembling the miniature wedges into segmented rings, and getting them ready for glue up. In part two of this video series, I'll be describing the glue up of the segmented rings, cleaning up and sanding the glued up rings, and producing a few miniature segmented ring projects. Hello, I'm John Manier from AccuSlice. This video described the design and production of these miniature or micro segmented disc using the bandsaw. These segmented discs vary in diameter from one inch in diameter down to half an inch in diameter. And the number of segments or wedge in each disc ranges from 12 segments per ring, most of them are 18 segments per ring, all the way down to 36 segments per ring. These are a few of the segmented rings we produced. This one has 12 segments per ring. This has 18 segments per ring. This one has 24 segments per ring. And this one has 36 segments per ring. And these are all between 3 quarter and 1 inch in diameter. These segments or wedges were sliced on the bandsaw using the AccuWedge and AccuSlice systems. The segments were sliced from boards that were 1 quarter inch thick, 3 eighth inch thick, and 1 half inch thick and they are between 1 and 1 and a half inches tall and 12 to 18 inches long. These small segments were sliced with pointed ends so that when they are assembled into a segmented disc, there is little or no gap in the center of the segmented disc. The AccuSlice and AccuEdge systems were developed seven years ago. I have made many segmented ring projects using the AccuEdge system, which are described in our YouTube videos. Last week a customer inquired about producing small segmented rings less than one inch in diameter, they could be used for pen making. I had produced several miniature projects in the past, normally using the dizzy patterns as shown in these projects and described on YouTube videos. But to date I had not made any miniature segmented disc projects. As a result of this customer's request, I decided I would develop the techniques that could be used to produce these small or micro segmented discs on a bandsaw using the AccuWedge and AccuSlice systems. Slicing these small wedges on the table saw would not be very practical or very safe. However, using the AccuWedge system on the bandsaw, these wedges could be produced both safely and accurately. I recently had a request from a customer to make small segmented rings. Actually, segmented rings less than an inch in diameter. The customer wanted to make segmented rings for making pens. I never tried anything that small. Usually, I get just the opposite. When people want to make bigger segment of rings. And the question is, you only can get a uh, board up to two inches wide between the two uh, fences on the AccuWedge system. So the answer for making bigger wedges is just use the outside here and the outside here. It works fine. You can do, you know, wider boards. But smaller boards, you know, down, down to like half an inch in diameter to make a one inch diameter segment of ring uh, is quite a bit of a challenge. And I did make some prototypes and I did get it to work quite well. And I made two segment of rings here. One of these is, has 12 segments, and the other has 18 segments. And these are both an inch in diameter. A few challenges did come up in doing these. Since the segments are so small, I was having trouble with the outside angle on this fence. So I ended up putting a board on here, just like an eighth inch thick board with double-sided tape, and it goes all the way out so that it actually rides right against the blade and that prevents the uh, end of the board from getting uh, you know, uh, ripped off. Hopefully this picture explained what was happening. This is a spare right fence for the AccuWedge table. Notice the curvature on the end of the fence. This curve is needed to enable the adjustment of the AccuWedge fences for the various angles needed for different numbers of segments. However, due to this curvature on the end of the fence, the wedges being cut off by the bandsaw blade are not supported when they're close to the bandsaw blade. This is no problem for the larger wedges, but when slicing the small wedges, the wedges tend to slip off the side of the fence and get trapped between the bandsaw blade and this curved surface on the fence, and the wedges then get chewed up by the bandsaw blade. By adding a thin sacrificial board to the side of the fence, the boards being sliced are now better supported, and the sliced off wedges do not get trapped between the bandsaw blade and the fence. They just drop off onto the ramp. 
So I actually got a piece of uh, scrap. This is a piece of uh, lem or cut boards I cut in the past. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. Actually, a piece of paduk, about an inch wide. And I ran it through my uh, planer to get it perfectly the same uh, thickness on both sides because it has to be perfectly parallel. If it's not parallel, you're going to get inaccurate wedges. But these wedges came out perfect using this. So I put some double-sided tape on here and then clamped it to the fence in both cases. But that worked good in the uh, the, the segment of ring is, is perfect. And I did it on both sides. And I think I'll get better cuts and probably reduce the, uh, the burrs on my boards as I'm cutting them. So I'll be trying that with this project. So I'm starting off with the same board I made these two. This is a piece of maple. It's a half inch wide, an inch, one inch tall. And I'll be making some uh, 18 segmented rings. So I have my AccuWedge all set up with all the latest uh, additions to the system. Starting off with my, with my AccuWedge, which is set to 18 segments per, seg or per wedge. And this is my board. I'm using a piece of maple. It's a half inch wide, an inch thick. I have my uh, double sh shield on the system and I have ramp. And this ramp is actually quite nice with these small pieces since I have very little gap now between my sled and the ramp. So it definitely works much better. i also use my new dust collector out here so that will help me uh, reduce a lot of some of the dust, although it's kind of far away from the, uh, the bandsaw blade. So I'm cutting segments trying to keep my uh, gap in the, in the center as small as possible. That should be less than an eighth of an inch diameter uh, gap in the center of the rings. I have my uh, wedge all set up. I made sure my blade was perpendicular to my sled. And I put clamps on here. These are uh, the uh, half inch uh, turn clamps to clamp the board down tight against the uh, table and against the fence. So I'm pushing the board against my accu stop. And I'm ready to start cutting uh, wedges. So I'll be making 18 wedges from this board. I'm using the same procedures that I used for slicing the larger wedges in the past. I do not rotate the board. I just alternate between the two accurate wedge fences to slice the wedges. Notice that I also sanded off the fuzzies from the tip of the board before slicing the wedges on a left hand fence. Well, there's my finished wedges and these are small. <laughs> They're about maybe 3 sixteenths on the outside and down to less than a sixteenth of an inch on the inside. So they're an inch, an inch tall. So we'll sand these and we'll see what they look like. But they're, uh, they are small. But this jig using these uh, boards on here definitely worked much better. By putting this uh, like a sacrificial fence on the, uh, the, the rail here or the, uh, the small fence, I get nice straight cuts, and the birds are nice and clean, and actually a little bit smaller than the, uh, they were before, so they should clean up quite nicely. But what's happening before was actually kicking, and the board was actually catching in here and then flipping out. So that didn't work too well, because they're just too small of a wedge. And here's the resulting segment ring. And it's 18 segments, and it's an inch, inch in diameter, and the center gap is less than an eighth of an inch. They can go a little bit smaller. Let me try another one going a little bit smaller on it. So I'm going to go one step smaller, see if I make a little bit smaller segment at ring. And I use the same technique I've done in the past, putting an offset line on the board, so always keep it offset. So when I put them, when I put it together, you can see the rings alternate back and forth between the two different cuts. Because if you get these upside down or reverse, you, won't get, you might not get a perfect wedge. So that's the, the segment ring I have now. I can go a little bit smaller. What I'm doing here is feeling the uh, edge of the bandsaw blade. I should be able to just feel the teeth of the blade on the edge of the board. That way you know I have a you know, perfect point when I make the cut. Notice that the sliced off wedges fall off and onto the new ramp. This new ramp is necessary for slicing these small wedges due to the small gaps between the ramp, the bandsaw blade, and the side edge of the Aki wedge table. This eliminates the possibility of the sliced off wedges getting trapped against the bandsaw blade and the ramp. 
I just moved the camera to get a better shot of the actual slicing of the wedges so you can see more accurately what is actually happening. This part of the video as well as all other cutting uh, video is actually being shown at five times the actual cutting speed. Again, just for viewing purposes. Normally you'd be cutting five times slower than is actually shown here. Yeah, I just want to show the size of these wedges. I said they're about an inch long and the back is about an eighth of an inch wide and they're less than half an inch thick. Well, there is a slight burr in these pieces. They're very small, but there is a burr that needs to be sanded off. And I switched to a glove because it was they're so small or so hard to handle, it was actually uh, sand away the skin on my fingers. So I put a glove on here to save my fingers. We just need to sand that burr off lightly and get rid of the fuzzies off the bottom because there's also, if you look at the bottom edge, there's fuzzies on the bottom edge that needs to be sanded off too. It is important you sand off the burrs and the fuzzies off the pieces, but it's also very important you not change the shape of the wedge itself. So I try to keep the even pressure on the wedge so it doesn't change the shape around the corners. I also sand each of the wedges evenly, so it's not to take more surface off any one of the wedges. And that cleaned the fuzzies off and cleaned the burr off. There's actually burrs on both, on both edges of these. This burr occurs at the end of the cut where the bandsaw blade exits the wood being sliced. The burr occurs because a slice-off wedge is not supported by a table. And then I continue sanding the remaining uh, 18 segments until all the segments have been cleaned up and removed as burrs and fuzzies. After the sanding was complete, I assembled the wedges into the final assembled segmented disc. Notice there's almost no gap in the center of the segmented disc. Next time I'm going to make some segments of contrasting colors. So I have some yellow heart and some uh, paduk. Again, I ran these boards through my uh, board planer or board sander to get them exactly the same thickness and the same width. And once again, I put my lines on them so I know exactly where I'm cutting. And again, these are... Uh, 18 segments per, per wedge, and I'm trying to get them pretty close to a perfect point in the center. For all the slicing of the wedges in this video, I'm speeding up the video five times the actual cutting speed. I'm also only showing the cutting of two or three wedges in order to reduce your viewing time. And there's the result of cutting that paduka and yellow heart. So out of those two boards, I made two segmented disc. Again, these are 18 segments per disc, alternating colors. Not quite going to a point for point in the center. It's about, well, it's less than an eighth of an inch in the center. Well, I successfully uh, produced these segmented discs from half inch stock to produce some one inch diameter of segmented disc. But the question is, how small can I go? So I just milled some stock. I have some 3 8 inch stock I milled down, and also some quarter inch stock. Uh, I think I'll be able to cut both of these. These are going to be sanding because they're so small. I'd use gloves even to sand these because they're, your fingers are right against the sandpaper and it chews up your fingers. So that may be an issue. But we'll give it a try. So I'll start with the, uh, the 3 8 inch stock first. That should produce a 3 quarter inch diameter uh, segmented disc. Then if I go to the quarter, that should produce a half inch diameter segmented disc. So I'm all set to cut these boards now. I have two boards. These are contrasting wood, so I can make some alternating uh, segmented disc. So I made two changes to my AccuWedge system. The first was adding these sacrificial boards, so I have a nice straight edge uh, for cutting the, the cut cutoffs. The other change I made, I just modified my clamps. That these uh, clamps, I actually cut them shorter and I turned them down a little bit, so they clamp nice on the board. So you know, push it tight against the. Uh, uh, carriage and against the sacrificial fence. 
The other thing to keep in mind when you're doing your uh, boards is they must be perfectly flat and, and the sides must be parallel. This top and bottom must be parallel because you don't want this thing rocking as you're doing it. And you want them straight so that the uh, segments are all the same size. So it's important all the sides are perfectly straight and parallel and square. After I make this first cut, and I'll start the second cut, and then I'll show you the results so that I can show you how I can estimate how I can get a near perfect point going to the center of my segmented disc. Well, I, made, I started my first cut, and the issue is I have my uh, uh, blade curve going halfway through the board, and this point here is near a near perfect point. And the, the distance or the width of this should not be below this flat surface. If it's below this flat surface, that means you're, you're cutting too much off. And if it's, you know, too far this way, then you get a, a flat edge. So it's a compromise of getting that cut in exactly the right place. And the smaller you can get that front edge and still keep that distance the same as this width, uh, the more accurate your cut's going to be to get a perfect point going to the center. I just want to show you the size of that wedge. That's a small segment of wedge. So it's 3 8 inch diameter. It's about a 16th inch on the side. And it's about an inch long. As I suspect that the problem is sanding, and these pieces are so small, it's really hard to hold them to sand them. Especially to sand that front edge where I have the uh, the burr on the front edge. There's a decent sized burr on this front edge, and I've got to sand it off, and it's really hard holding it to sand that off. I'm trying to put pressure in that front edge, and it's Move the fuzzies off the bottom too. And then I continue sanding all the remaining segments, both the uh, maple and the pudok, to remove the uh, burrs and the fuzzies off each of these pieces. After the sanding of all the wedges has been completed, the wedges are assembled into the 18 segmented disc by alternating the two different wedges and making sure the black lines on the top ends of the wedges are all facing upwards. A rubber band is placed around the wedges to keep them in place. And these are the two assembled segmented wedges. Well, that completes these two segmented discs and these are you know, three quarter inch in diameter. Now let's try the uh, half inch ones next. I just want to show the size of these segmented discs. They are a little, they are set a quarter inch wide. The edge here is less than a sixteenth of an inch. And I said the problem is going to be a sanding these. So it was hard enough sanding the, the three eighths. Sanding these quarters is going to be near impossible. Just it's hard to get this uh, this edge sanded. There is a burr in this front edge, and that's what's hard to sand because you can't you can't hold it properly to sand it. And there's the finished uh, segmented disc. These made are just a hair over half an inch in diameter. And again, there's uh, 18 segments per disc. And these are a little over, a little over an inch long, probably about an inch and a quarter long. As a final test, I'm going to try cutting some 36 wedges per segmented disc. Uh, this, uh, this is some uh, 3 8 inch thick uh, boards, so this will give me a segmented disc 3 quarter inch in diameter, hopefully with 36 segments. 
Uh, these segments are going to be pretty small. Uh, difficult again is going to be sanding them because they're going to be so small. Uh, so we'll see how it works out, but uh, I'll give it a try. I got set up, and I have it pretty close to being a perfect center, but may not might, might have a small gap in the center just because the wood is so small and so thin. So even though these segments were very small, there was no issue cutting them with the AccuWedge system. In fact, I even cut smaller segments. The issue is sanding. Here's the uh, segment disc for this project. This is a, again, 36 segments per disc. And uh, the thickness at the brim, the thickness on the widest part is about a sixteenth of an inch. And of course, then they're three, uh, three eighths of an inch wide, but they're a pretty small segment of disc. But they're a pretty small segment at wedge, so we'll see how these come out. So let me uh, finish cutting the rest. So these are the resulting 36 segment by 3 4 inch diameter segment of disc with alternating Paduk and Mabel produced for this video. Producing these 36 segments in a 3 4 inch diameter segment of ring can be quite the challenge, just due to the small size of the wedges. Sanding was the main challenge. There was just no good way of holding the wedges as you sand them. It took me over an hour to sand the 72 wedges required for this project. As I was sanding them, I noticed that I was rounding some of the edges on some of the wedges during the sanding probably due to uneven pressure on the wedges as I was sanding. In addition, several of the wedges broke since they are so thin and fragile. So I did lose a few wedges during the sanding process, but as usual, I made some spares. From the 3 8 inch stock of Paduk and Maple boards that I used in this example, I produced segmented discs with 18, 24, and 36 segments per disc. I just revised the way I'm uh, sanding my small segments. Since these are so small, and I'm trying to get rid of the burrs and the fuzzies, but I don't want to change the shape and I don't want to round the edges of these small segments. So instead of using that small sheet of sandpaper, I'm using a full sheet, 8.5 by 11, of uh, sandpaper. And I'm using it on the edge of my bench or my uh, table saw table, which is a nice flat surface with no bumps or it's nice and smooth. And what I'm doing with this is I'm taking the wedge, I'm putting my fingers on the flat surface here, and I can just draw it back like this. Keep an even pressure along the whole piece so I don't change the shape around any edges. And just keep doing that. That gets rid of the burrs and get rid of those fuzzies frequently from the sandpaper. And just keep doing that until the, the fuzzy is gone. And I can do both directions. But the idea is to keep an even pressure on this flat surface that you don't change the shape around the edges. And this full sheet of paper seems to work better than those small, those small sheets. And of course I'm using gloves because this uh, sandpaper was chewing up my fingers because these pieces are so small. So let me continue uh, sanding these and we'll show you how it works. I get rid of the, the burr and I get rid of the fuzzies on the bottom edge. I usually just watch that front edge lightly to remove any fuzzies that might be on that front sharp edge. And that cleaned it up pretty nice. So I just keep doing that for the rest of the pieces. With the piece with the burr on the bottom edge, I usually put it down here and I'll push it this way first to get rid of the fuzzies. and then just go back and forth a couple times to clean it up. Do the other side real quick. Get rid of those fuzzies on that edge. Get rid of the fuzzies on the bottom. And that's pretty much done. With the fuzzies, or the, uh, with the burrs on this front edge with the bevel. I usually put it down like this. Put my fingers on that edge. Draw it back. That gets rid of most of the burr. And then drill it back and forth a couple of times. And that cleans the burr off pretty much completely. 
Clean off the burrs there. Clean off the burrs there. And that cleans it up nice. So we'll just continue that for the rest of the pieces. I actually sped the uh, sanding process up and I get a much nicer finish. Those are all look good now. And after the sanding's done, I put a rubber band around the pieces and it's a perfect joint. You see I have two extra pieces here. Usually when I cut these wedges I make uh, an extra set of two. Just in case when I'm sanding it it'll chip in here. I can't use a piece but uh, these all worked out perfectly. I had no, no chips. But I always make two extra just to make sure that I don't lose any. This is an example of the many wedges that were sliced for this video. The wedges varied in width from a quarter inch to a half inch wide and they produced a variety of segmented discs that range in diameter from a half inch in diameter up to one inch in diameter. This concludes part one of this two-part video series on producing micro or miniature segmented disc. In part two of this video series, I'll be demonstrating the gluing up of the miniature segmented disc, cleaning them up, and producing some miniature segmented disc projects. I knew there were going to be a few issues in producing these miniature segmented discs just due to the small size of the wedges or segments. I did make a few minor changes to the AccuWedge system and developed the techniques that were required to produce these miniature and micro segmented discs. In this part one video, I produced miniature segmented discs that were between one inch and one half inch in diameter and between 12 and 36 segments per disc. I was able to slice wedges that came to a near perfect point on the ends of the wedges in order to produce segmented discs with little or no gap in the center of the segmented disc. I demonstrated it's possible to produce one half inch diameter segmented disc. However, sanding and gluing up these smaller segmented discs was a challenge. Slicing the one quarter inch wide boards to produce the one half inch segmented disc was not an issue. In fact, I probably could have sliced even smaller wedges using the AccuWedge system. The main problem is sanding the miniature wedges. Part two of this video series will continue in about a week with the gluing up of the miniature segmented disc and producing a few miniature segmented disc projects. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, please give us a call or drop us an email. And thank you.